Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. I've got my blog pulled up here and if I come underneath the settings, I've got several options I can do, including changing the coloring on the site. And this saves to your local storage so you can come around later and it will all remember your settings. You can also change the background and the same kind of thing applies. Now, there's a lot of really old code on the site and one of these days I'm gonna get around to changing it. But for now, I just wanna work on improving this toggle situation. And I've got an example right over here. Not only do I have uh, mouse access everywhere, but I can also grab focus state by just tabbing to the input right here. And then when you click it, there's a nice little uh, audio Easter egg for you. Day class A. Or you can have? Classy. So there you go. All right, so well, this is what we're gonna build out today, uh, just using HTML, CSS, and just a touch of JavaScript to play that audio. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, I've just got an empty directory, an empty folder open on my machine, and I've got VS Code open to it. If I come in here, we're gonna do a couple things. First of all, I'm gonna go ahead and, and have a new file called index.html, and we'll just start with some boilerplate code. If I do a bang and then enter here, uh, that will give me all this, and that's what I need to get started. We'll call this something like uh, toggle button, and then I do need to go ahead and grab my audio files, and I'm gonna grab those from my other screen. All right, I'll just drop those right in there. And you can see I've got a classy and a not classy MP3. All right, so we are set to go. What we need to do is do a few things. First of all, let's go ahead and scaffold out uh, the HTML. To start with, I'm just gonna have a main tag. This is where everything will live. And then I'll have a toggle container that will hold the entire toggle section. Now everything inside this container will be wrapped in a label tag and we'll point this to an ID of theme and that will be what our input is here. This will be a checkbox and we will set the ID to theme. This associates the two together. Since I'm actually wrapping this input anyhow with the label, I don't think this is strictly necessary, but it's always a good practice. Now let's go ahead and give this a class so we can style it. I'm gonna call this a theme and then I'm gonna have three more spans. So I'll have a span here with the class of theme text like that and we'll call this classic. Then let's copy this down and move it down this way. And I'll say colorized. I finally need one more span just up here. This doesn't need to have anything in it. And I'm just gonna call it theme button, just like that. Now in order to play the audio, we do actually need it somewhere on the page. So I'm gonna add an audio tag here and we'll point it to audio and then classy. And let's copy this down. And this should be now not classy. For both of these, I'm gonna set an ID here. We'll say classy like that. And then I'll change this again here, and let's call this uh, day class A. Is that how you spell it? I don't know. It's a fake word. Now I've got an extension called Live Server on my machine. Let's go ahead and click this. I'm going to get it set up to where I've got the browser on the right and all my code on the left. Okay, so I've dragged it over here, and as you can see, uh, there we go. No styling at all so far. Let me come up top here, and rather than creating a separate style sheet, let's go ahead and just do one directly here in the document. So let's see, inside the body tag, I'll just have a style tag here, and we'll just write all of our styles right here on this same document so we don't have to be jumping back and forth. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in two things. First of all, a basic clear. As you can see, this just sets box sizing to border box and sets my mat margin and padding to zero. And secondly, I wanna set up some of my colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste these in, and then I'll let me talk you through them uh, just so you don't have to watch me do all this. So I've got CSS variables here for all of them, and you can see I've got them set as HSL colors, but I haven't actually wrapped them in HSL, and I'll show you why in a second. But I've got my green, yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, dark, which is like that black color, and light. And then I've also got a gradient that basically just takes these colors and lines them up right next to each other, uh, just all the actual colors, not the black and the white. I'll have links in the description to the code if you want to play around with it yourself. All right, now that we've got all that set, let's go ahead and style the main tag. This will be a display of grid, and then I want to place items center. This puts everything in the very center of the screen. But to make sure it's actually going to stay in the center, I want to make sure that this takes up the entire height of the screen uh, at the very least. So if I save this, this should move everything to the center. All right, next, let's set some padding to one rem. And then I'll set the background color here. And here, what I want is my HSL of light. Now you can see here what I've done is now I've taken the CSS variable that didn't actually have HSL wrapped around it, and I've just set it inside of an HSL function. Now I'll show you again why I'm gonna do that in a second, but basically what it allows is I can add transparencies like 0.2 or something like that, rather than having to have those already written up above. I can do those dynamically as I write out the code. Next, let's set some basic things for our fonts. So I'll have a font family here, and this is just like the Apple system font. Whatever font you wanna use, you can use here. I'm gonna set a font size to clamp one rem, 2.3 view widths, and then 1.8 rem. This clamp function basically says, hey, 
get as small as this, as large as this, and try to hit this dynamic uh, viewport width size. Finally, let's go ahead and set this to font weight of bold. If I save it there, here we go, we get a little bit of a darker uh, background, and then this picks up that styling of the font. All right, now to the actual toggle proper. And everything is inside that label with the class of theme, so we should be able to get away with just uh, styling that. I want this to be a position of relative because I'm going to have some things position absolute in reference to this, and then I'll set the display to grid. Place items center puts everything again in the middle of this exact thing, and then I want the grid auto flow to go to columns. Now, I could also do this as flex, and that would actually naturally go left to right, but this allows me to use the gap property, and it's not quite as well supported um, on anything older than basically a year ago. So Safari's supported this for flex for about a year, uh, but just to make sure it works everywhere, I'm just going to keep this as grid because that's a little better supported going further back. Next, I'll set my padding here to 0.5 rem and then 1.25 rem. That'd be up and down and left and right. Then I want my border to be four pixels uh, solid, and I'll have my HSL of dark. Finally, that border itself needs to have a border radius of 100 view width, and that's a little trick to make sure it's always a pill shape no matter what. And then I'll set my text transform here to uppercase. And let's get some more letter spacing in here. We'll do 0.04m. So if I save that, there we go. Everything is set and ready to go. Now, you can see here that anywhere I click, because this whole thing is a label, the checkbox gets checked. And that's important. That's why we've styled it the way we have here, where everything is inside this label. And this theme points to this ID. Speaking of that input, though, let's go ahead and grab that. So the input here, this will be a position of absolute. This is why we needed this whole label to be position relative. And then I want this to be inset 0. That's left, right, top, and bottom of 0. And then I'll set the width here to 100% and the height to 100%. And that's important because it basically is going to stretch this whole thing everywhere around so that when we add a focus state, it'll actually be on the outside of this, which is what we want. Next, I want to set this to a cursor of pointer. And since it fills that whole section now anywhere, I'm going to have a cursor. And that's what I want to see. Again, because I'm going to add a focus state, let's go ahead and set the border radius to the same thing that we have up top, which is 100% view width. And then to hide it, let's set the appearance to none. And we'll also set the WebKit appearance to none as well. Now, as of Safari 15.4, you no longer need this, but a lot of people aren't running Safari 15.4 quite yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and add it. And when I save there, you see that that input disappears altogether. All right, now I mentioned wanting to change the focus state, so let's come in here and look at the input whenever it has a focus visible. So that means whenever I've tabbed to that, then what I want to do is set the outline here to four pixels, solid, and then we'll have our blue color as the outline color. And I do want there to be somewhat of an offset, so I'll set that at four pixels. Now if I come over here, click up here and hit tab, now I get this, and if I were to take this off, you'll see the default, which is that which is, you know, nasty. So we don't need that. All right, perfect. Um, now I do have both of these text areas, the classic and the colorized. And right now, if I were to come in here, I might be able to drag and select that text. There you go. And I don't want to be able to do that. So there's actually a way to disable that. So let's grab our theme uh, text like that. And I'll set user select to none. Now, no matter what I do, I should not be able to select that text. And you can see I can't any longer. All right, now let's actually start styling the button so we can see the whole effect. So I'm going to grab my button here, and I'll say position of relative because, again, I'm going to position things inside of this, actually the after element, uh, relative to this button itself, this span. We'll set the pointer events to none, and that will ensure that I can't click on it itself. Anything I'm clicking on will actually click through it, and we'll hit the input, which is what I want. Next, I'm actually going to manually set the width here, so 5.5 rem, and then for my height, I want 3 rem. And because it's such a small number, you could do that. Normally, you're especially not setting heights uh, actually locked into your code here. Next, I'll set a border radius, and I want the same trick here, 100% view width to make sure I get that pill shape. And then I'll have a box shadow just to give it a slight kind of inset here. We'll be inset 0 pixels, negative 1 pixels, 5 pixels, that's the blur. And then here's one of those tricks where I'm going to use a little bit of opacity. So I'll do comma, 0.2, and save that. So now you can see I've got this inset box shadow. And if I don't have this 0.2, you'll see that it's just way, way too dark. But now I can actually dynam dynamically just decide exactly how much uh, shadow, that inset shadow, I want. This is going up 1 pixels and then a 5 pixel blur. All right, I think we're mostly there on the button itself, kind of the, the background section. Now what we're going to do is grab the button and grab its after element. 
Now, in order to do an after element, I've got to have content, even if I don't have content. So I can just set that to an empty string. And then let's set this to position of uh, absolute. And just so we can see it, I'll set a width to 2.5 rem and then a height as well. And then we'll position it where we want it to be. So height as well. And then let's go ahead and set a color to it. So I'll set a background color here to uh, my dark. There it is in all its ugliness. Let's first of all get it rounded. So we'll do border radius, 100% view width. And then let's set a box shadow as well, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Here we'll set this to zero pixels. That's left and right zero pixels, down one pixel, just a small blur of two pixels. And then we'll do that dark again and set it to like 60% opacity. All right, you can see it just stands out just a touch there and makes it look slightly more realistic. And that's what we're going for. All right, now let's get this thing positioned where we want it. So let me come back up here and I'll say top 50%. So that's 50% of its parent container. And you can see now the very top of this is in the exact center. So we need to now translate it back. So I'll say transform. I'll set this to translate 3D, which engages the GPU. I think that's how that works. And then I'll set uh, just it to go back up 50%. So this is the X, the Y, and the Z coordinate. You can see now it's right in the middle, but I do actually want to also move it left. We'll do point uh, to rem. All right, now if I were to come over here and zoom in just a touch, you can see it's just right where I want it. You know, you can change that a little bit if you want. Maybe you want it more like 0.3, uh, you know, whatever floats your boat. All right, so we've got that set where we want it to be. And now I want to do one more thing on this transform. Let's see, let me move this up. And then right below here, I'm going to do transition. And we'll set this to the transform property. We'll do 0.2 seconds. And then let me go ahead and paste in a cubic Bezier curve just to give us a little more snappiness. And you'll see that once we uh, look at it being checked. All right, so let's come over here. And all we have to do now is style what it will look like once it's checked. So I'm going to paste that back in. Except here, what I want to know is whenever I have a theme with the input that is checked, then I want to look at its sibling, which is the theme button itself. And I want to apply some styles to the after element. Here, I want to set the background image here to my gradient up top. So gradient, and because the way I set that up, I don't actually have to wrap this in HSL. It's already a linear gradient. So I just want to uh, peg it in just like that. And then I also want to move it over. So I'll say transform. And what we want to do is translate 3D it. And here I want it to move over 2.5 rem, and then we'll keep it at that 50%. Uh, that would be up and down, and then zero for the Z index. I also want to rotate it though, just to make sure they see exactly what's going on here. And it gives it a little bit more of a pop to 90 degrees. Now, if I come in here and I click, as soon as this is checked, it should switch over and spin as well. And then it'll spin back. Here we go, back and forth. All right, cool. So that's everything. And in fact, if I come over here and tab to it and hit the space bar, it should do the same thing because we've set up uh, this as an input and the whole thing is being selected. All right, that leaves one more thing and it's just the fun JavaScript. And so what we're going to do is let's just come down here. And again, we'll just do this all inline on the page. And here I've got the script tag. Let's go ahead and grab... Uh, let's call it classy audio and i'll say document dot query selector and all we want to do is grab the id of classy that would be uh, this right here and then let's copy this down we'll do the same thing except we'll say let's call this not classy audio and this will be day class a now with that in place let's go ahead and do one more thing which is add an event listener for that input so we'll say query selector and right now let's uh, i guess we can grab the id that was the id of what theme Theme. There we go. All right. So we'll grab the ID of theme, which is the input itself. We'll add an event listener here. And what we're listening for is change. Whenever it changes, let's grab the event itself. Let's see, I don't know if we're going to need that. So yeah, I guess we will. Let's write a ternary here. We'll say e.target.checked. So if it is checked, uh, then just for spacing reasons, let's move this down here. We'll say the not classy audio should play like that. Uh, otherwise, we want the classy audio to dot play. And that's just a method that lives on both of these things. And let's see, I don't need that there. All right, let's save that. If we did that correctly, here we go. Day class A. Classy? All right, so there we go. We've got the whole thing along with the audio Easter egg. And I hope that was a lot of fun for you on a Friday. Thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.